everyone. It's been a while since uh, we did a video together, but uh, we decided to now make a few uh, at least before New Year's and continue doing this. So I finally um, wrangled Mark to sit down and, <laughs> and do I have my little uh, question list and um, obviously I'm, I'm curious about a lot of things and I think that many of you are as well. So here we go. Um, here's another short talk with Mark Eanes and this time we want to talk to him or I want to talk to him. We about talk about these things between ourselves by the way. Yes. So it isn't the first time we have these conversations. Well and we also get questions sometimes mm -hmm. through Mark's Instagram or Facebook and you know people ask questions which I actually like a lot because it inspires uh, me and Mark and, and gives us topic to think about and, and talk about. So I would want to encourage you to continue asking questions in the comments or you know sending private messages, whatever is um, more comfortable for you. And then we'll try to discuss those questions in some of the future videos. And I promise to be harsher with Mark and uh, make him sit <laughs> a little more often. So. Okay, so today uh, we decided we wanted to cover the topic of inspiration. Uh, we wanted to, well Mark wanted to share his thoughts on where does inspiration come from? How do we keep it alive once we have it? And how do we bring it to life if we don't have it? Mm, yeah, it's a big, big topic. We could go on and on. Um, so let me start by saying that just a few minutes ago, before I came into the studio to be with Maria and to have this talk, um, I was on our deck looking out over uh, the straits. We have the river scene here. Yesterday we had a great big storm that came through the area. And now today the sun, the light is gorgeous. There are these huge cumulus clouds drifting very slowly. And I found myself wanting to go outside and just watch the clouds go by slowly. And in doing so, uh, I became transfixed, uh, watching the light, the clouds, the colors. Then all of a sudden I saw a ship passing by ever so slowly and the light on the ship. Then I noticed a, a circle of turkey buzzards flying in front of the clouds. And I was just transfixed by the whole sight. And nothing else mattered at that moment, you see. Um, and what I want to say in this regard is that I think it's the artist's job, at least from my experience, and here I can only speak of my own experience and my own yeah. training. I think it's our job, if you will, responsibility or uh, endeavor to notice the world around us and to pay attention. And then through our art, give some kind of not representation, but interpretation of what we're seeing, thinking, and feeling in our work, however it manifests. And I wanted to begin with this, having that as a backdrop, with a small quote. I like to take books into my class when I talk with my students at California College of the Arts. These are young painters. This is Raymond Carver, a very favorite writer of mine. He's a short story writer. And in an essay on writing, he has this uh, passage Bear with me while I find it. Ah, here we go. He's talking about what makes for a great writer. And I would say the same is true for what makes a great artist, painter, if you will. He says, writers do not need tricks or gimmicks or even necessarily need to be the smartest fellow on the block. At the risk of appearing foolish, a writer sometimes needs to be able to just stand and gape at this thing or that thing a sunset or an old shoe in simple and absolute amazement. I know it pretty well. I know yeah, it by heart. Like you know heart. <laughs> I know most of it by heart. Um, I've read it many times. I love that statement. At the risk of appearing foolish, hmm. the writer, the artist, needs to be able to just gape at this thing or that thing, a cloud passing through, a circle of birds, a ship on the on the river. This keeps our eyes open. Now I say this in particular to my young painters, and I think this is true for all of us, because we have been invaded by the screen. Yeah. 
and the screen has invaded our lives. And when I talk about the screen, it's everything from the iPhone to the iPad to the um, laptop to our devices. We have been invaded by our devices, which are remarkable tools. Well, can but, one find inspiration even on the internet? Of course one can. It's a great tool. But the point I'm making, the larger point I'm making, and I make this to my young colleagues, my, my colleagues, my young painters, it is, is the future way, is that there is a great risk involved with these devices. And the risk involved is that they're very seductive, they are alluring, um, and they are compelling. They are stupidly compelling. Mm. And for every, and I tell them, because some of them are completely addicted, and they're on their phones constantly, and I say to them, for every hour that you're on that device and not looking at the world around you, not taking in phenomena, um, you're missing a great opportunity to engage in the world. And I think that this is a great danger. I say that because it's true for myself. I've, I've noticed it in my own life. And so whenever I find myself, let's say I'm at the supermarket, and all of a sudden I'm in line and I have to wait, I could be compelled to pull out my phone for God's sake, and that's ridiculous. Why not just take in what's in front of me, the person in front of me, what they're buying, anything. Yeah. It's being in tune with what's in front of us, you see. So and, it sounds to me, I'm sorry to interrupt, yeah, but it yeah, sounds yeah. to me like inspiration for you is basically being alive with the emphasis of being alive and, and taking life in yes. and participating in life around. But how is that? Is, th is there a recipe that is particularly good for artists? Because I feel that that, we can agree on that, but that is good for any human being. But is there a particular recipe for artists, painters, that would be about inspiration? Like you being mostly abstract painter. Well, people know you actually mostly as an abstract painter, but um, as you probably um, noticed through Mark's Instagram, he does also figurative drawing um, and he draws from, from nature. Like right now he's doing this drawing, we'll show it, of a plant. So does it mean that depending on what kind of art one does as, a, as an artist, that you should find inspiration in the similar topics or in, you know, like something that would easily translate into the artwork or not, even if you're an abstract artist, can you still find inspiration in a river? And the other way around, if you're a landscape painter, can you find inspiration, let's say, while waiting in the line of a grocery store? Well, first of all, there's no recipe on any of this. It's every individual has to discover this. It's a discovery. And obviously inspiration comes in so many foreign forms, a myriad of forms. The music we hear, the conversations we have, the books we read, our walks in the woods. It's a myriad of forms, but it's about being present. Um, and as it relates to how it manifests in our work, again, it's a very individual, private thing. I happen to be inspired by nature, but not everyone walks that path. Some people might be inspired by the cityscapes. Others are inspired by computers and what they're capable of doing. Mm -hmm. Others are inspired by Japanese comics. You know, the list goes on and on and on. Mm -hmm. But I think for one artist to be, how should we say, to discover one's own personal voice over many years, that is a very deep and subjective and private journey. But the issue of inspiration I believe is important because if we're only regurgitating other styles, other voices, other visions, then I'm not that interested in that particular work. Are we going to talk about inspiration at all? Pardon? Can we then talk about inspiration at all? We can. It's a very, it's a very interesting subject. And it's a subject and a word that everyone banters around, but no one, very few people really dive into it. So it's a longer conversation. Agnes Martin, one of my favorite artists to not only um, enjoy but to read uh, from, talks about inspiration quite a bit. She tends to believe, and I tend to agree with her, that inspiration is there all along. 
It's not something that comes from above, floats on our shoulders. It's not something that we have to beseech or search for or wait for, which is what a lot of people think. I'm not inspired today. Um, uh, inspiration is there all along. It's just waiting for us to wake up to it and be ready for it and present for it. Mm -hmm. I know for myself that just being in the studio, starting the work is the inspiration alone. Um, I tend to believe that if you wait for inspiration, you may be out of luck. So then it sounds to me like inspiration is almost a, like a state of mind rather than something from the outside that will trigger us to do or not because that's something on the outside is always there. It's just a point of us hooking onto it or leaning into it or recognizing it as such. Yep. So it's almost, it feels it's like it's more like a state of mind. Yep. How am I doing as a human being rather than can something from the outside switch me on so that I can start creating? Yes, and, and exactly, Maria. And uh, to quote Agnes Martin again, she says that inspiration, I love this line, inspiration is a directive to action. It is directing us to act. Mm -hmm. So you're inspired by something, some moment, or maybe you're not feeling inspired, but once you have a directive to act, that in itself is inspirational, you see? So um, does it mean that if you don't feel really particularly inspired, but you want to, con to work because you know that from, for some time you haven't produced anything, do you just go into the studio and and is the forcing work. yourself a good word to say, like f forcing yourself, or is it just my my uh, yoga teacher says? Well, uh, uh, you know, um, practice is not about forcing. Mm -hmm. Practice is about discipline, and discipline is not forceful. Discipline is just doing the first step every day and then taking it from there. Exactly. So when you go into the studio not inspired, are you just? Hoping that making that first step. <laughs> to be honest, the moment I go into the studio, I know that I'm ready for uh, the act of discovery, which is the other thing that can be said about the creative process. It is an act of discovery. Just as a writer sits down to write, he or she doesn't know exactly what they're going to be doing. They start with one sentence and a character or a place, and then something just tags on and so on and so on. So when I go into the studio, I'm no matter what my mood is, because it can vary, I still am anticipating that act of discovery. What colors will I mix? How will I start? How do I finish this piece? All of that. That in and of itself is incredibly engaging. Um, Chuck Close, uh, also a, a wonderful painter in New York, said that uh, inspiration he felt was for amateurs. <laughs> Love it. Uh, <laughs> he, and he's a workaholic. He just gets in there and he does the work. And that can be enough. But that said, getting back to what I was talking about at the very beginning of this conversation, the ability to just, as, as Raymond Carver says, the ability to just stand and gape at this thing or that thing and be, take pleasure of just what's before us. It could be the reflection in your eyes right now that I'm seeing. It, it could be so many different things. But I do think that we live in an age of desensitization, if that's a word, being desensitized. Mm -hmm. And I think the machines and technology and the screens and all of that is a desensitizing process. It's why, for instance, if you read a novel, it's always better than the movie. Mm -hmm. Because the novel engages, the, it engages our imagination, the characters, the places, the events. We're engaged. You go see the movie, yes, it's fun, but everything has been spelled out for you. There is nothing left to the imagination. And inspiration, after all, I think, is part of the imaginative process. Being able to, right now, I was out there looking at clouds and I saw creatures. You know, that's mm -hmm. my imagination becoming engaged. Am I going to come in here and paint about clouds? Absolutely not. It has right. nothing to do with it. But I'm engaged. Right. I'm involved. I'm present. I'm awake to that moment. And that's a big part of it. Mm. So to... <laughs> <laughs> more, could I, be, more could be said. More could be said, yeah. And um, if you have any questions or you want to discuss this further, please do... It's a grand topic. Yeah, leave it's a, a grand, comment a or, or you know, share your thoughts yeah. uh, with Mark. And, what inspires and you. Yeah, definitely. And, and do you feel like you're ever without inspiration and just it's drudgery and how come that is? 
Right. For some people it is drudgery. And is inspiration coming from within or is it coming for you um, from someone or something else? Other artists, uh, well, objects? That's, that's a big topic. I'm totally inspired by looking at other artwork. All my life I've been looking at artwork and I get completely turned on by it and inspired. Mm -hmm. So I can go to any museum and spend an hour or two and I can't wait to get back to the studio. Not to emulate or to copy what I've just seen, but because I'm inspired by what I just saw. You know, but I could also go to a music concert and hear some beautiful music, the music that might even bring me close to tears. That also has impact in the studio. It's not the same correlation, but it's still very powerful. Yeah, so it sounds to me, and I, I, I'm actually surprised in a way that we came to this through this short conversation. It really sounds to me like inspiration is, is, is coming from within. It's how you perceive the world around and yes. just keeping our antennas open and our receivers in yeah. working order yeah. and then allow that to uh, work through us and then find its way out through cre a creative process. And it can start, Maria, from the moment you open your eyes when you wake up. Yeah. Some people will wake up, and I know this for myself, with fear. Who knows where that fear is coming from? But we can wake up and there can be fear mm -hmm. in our head and in our hearts. Even dread. Who knows why? But also, I can wake up, open my eyes, and see the light coming through the window. Like this morning, when mm -hmm. we saw that light. This morning, we saw light coming through the window from, from the rain. It was beautiful. Yes? yes? Do you remember? And then we saw the little fuchsia plant just outside our window. There's a little touch of pink against, against the, the gray the of the sky. There's that little touch of pink how the light hit that fuchsia plant. Yeah, and Maria nice. said, pointed it out and I saw it. That moment is what I'm talking about. That's yes. inspiration. Mm -hmm. It's there all the time, just waiting. Inspiration is there all the time. <laughs> just, <laughs> just waiting. Just find it. <laughs> you just have to Don't find think it. it's going to come landing down on your shoulder. If you do that, you're going to wait a long time. <laughs> all right, well, any last words you wanted to share or well it's a big topic it's like big i said topic. i'd love for people to respond and let us know um, what your thoughts are and if you have questions or comments about this subject because it's thoughts? a big subject and yeah. i mean it, it's a helpful conversation i think that people um, might find it helpful and inspirational not just to hear from mark but also to hear yeah. From other people. Yeah, um, this is just my own truth. Exactly. And everyone yeah. has their own truth around this. But I will say this last thing about it. Without some level, I guess is the word, without some deep level, really, of inspiration, then really, what is the work about? And mm -hmm. that's kind of dovetailing into mm -hmm. another topic that we had discussed earlier. You know, what is our work about? What is it we want to say? And what tools can we use to and say And what it? tools can we use to say it? Which okay, let's make that our next, next video. Yeah, what okay. can we say and what tools can we use to, yeah. to say it? Okay, well, I wanted to thank you for uh, being here, for sharing this video with your friends. If you find it useful and interesting, please do share it or subscribe to Mark's YouTube channel. And uh, if you have uh, interest in finding more about Mark and his work, go to his website, markings.com, and you will find there um, a link also to subscribe to Mark's newsletter so you can be updated on any shows coming up, workshops, workshops um, open studios, anything related to Mark's work as an artist. Thank you all for watching and see you again. Thanks.